Today, we're going to see just how good an AI generator is in giving puzzles and mysteries to solve. So this is OpenAI's ChatGPT. This is their free research version. I'm just curious to see what kind of responses it's going to give, if it's going to be super relevant to what I'm asking, if it's going to be able to follow my conversation or whatnot. So we'll see how this goes. All right, so maybe we can start off with a nice little riddle. <laughs> Can you tell me a riddle? Sure, here's one for you. I don't know if I should put like a robot voice. I am light as a feather, yet the strongest man cannot hold me for long. What am I? Oh, well, I mean, I, I know this one. It's got to be breath, right? Yes, that's correct. Well done. Here's another one for you. Oh, great. I didn't even ask for it. I'm taken from a mine and shut up in a wooden case for which I am never released. And yet I am used by almost every person. What am I? I also know this one. Might be a little tricky, but it's too bad I already knew it. That's right. Great job. Oh, here's another one. Okay, I guess you're not stop. I'm always hungry. I must always be fed. The finger I touch will soon turn red. What am I? I believe that is fire. Correct. Oh my gosh, it's nonstop. Well then, um, okay, maybe this will be the last one. Wait a second. Isn't it the same thing? <laughs> Isn't it just fire again? Um, okay, okay, time for a new chat. All right, now let's ask, do you know any good mysteries? Oh, uh, okay, I didn't ask that correctly. <laughs> Can you tell me a murder mystery to solve? Sure, here's a classic whodunit murder mystery for you to solve. A wealthy businessman named Mr. Smith is found dead in his office late one night. The police arrive to find the door locked from the inside and no signs of forced entry. The only clues in the room are a shattered vase and a note on a desk reading, I can't take it anymore. There are three suspects in the murder. Mrs. Smith, the victim's wife, who had a rocky marriage and was seen arguing with Mr. Smith earlier that day. Mr. Johnson, the victim's business partner, who was known to have a financial dispute with Mr. Smith. And third, Miss Davis, the victim's secretary, who was known to have a crush on Mr. Smith and was seen leaving the building shortly after the murder. It's up to you to investigate the crime scene, interview the suspects, and gather evidence to determine the identity of the murderer. Good luck. Okay, investigate the crime scene. So, what is at the crime scene? At the crime scene, the police found Mr. Smith's body lying on the floor of his office with a shattered vase near his body. The door was locked from the inside and there were no signs of forced entry. The only other clues in the room were a note on a desk reading, I can't take it anymore. The police also found a handgun near the body, which is believed to be the murder weapon. Additionally, the police noticed that the office had been ransacked, with papers and files scattered all over the floor. It appears that the murderer was searching for something specific, but it's unclear what that might be. Okay, so I have a gun near the body. And the place was ransacked. Okay, it said the crime scene interview the suspects and gather evidence. Okay. Let's interview Mrs. Smith. Oops, I spelled that. Oh well. Okay, that's very long. Let's go back up. Interviewing Mrs. Smith would be an important step in the investigation. Here's how the interview might go. Interesting. 
Good afternoon, Mrs. Smith. I understand you were married to the victim, Mr. Smith. Yes, that's correct. I can't believe he's gone. I'm sorry for your loss. Can you tell me about your relationship with your husband? Our relationship was complicated. We've been having some problems lately, and we're considering getting a divorce. Can you tell me about the argument you had with your husband earlier today? Yes, we had a big fight. He accused me of taking money from the business, but I swear I didn't do it. Do you have any alibis for the time of the murder? I was home all night. I have a maid who can confirm that I didn't leave the house. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Smith. If you think of anything else that might be helpful to our investigation, please don't hesitate to reach out. During the interview, it's important to pay attention to Mrs. Smith's body language, tone of voice, and any inconsistencies in her story. These details could help to determine if she's telling the truth or if she might be the murderer. How am I supposed to tell body language and tone of voice? Okay, well, I mean, we can try to verify her alibi. Can I speak to the maid? Let's see, can I speak to the maid? Yes, speaking to the maid would be a good next step in the investigation. Here's how the interview might go. Good afternoon, I understand you work as a maid for Mrs. Smith. Yes, that's correct. Can you tell me about your whereabouts last night? I was at the Smith residence all night. I arrived at 7 p.m. and didn't leave until the police arrived this morning. Did you notice anything unusual during your time at the residence? No, everything seemed normal. Mrs. Smith was in the room for most of the night and I didn't hear any arguments or disturbances. Thank you for your time. If you think of anything else that might be helpful to our investigation, please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. It's important to corroborate the maid's story with other evidence and potentially speak to other witnesses to see if her story holds up. Okay, do we have a time? Let me check. Late one night. Okay, let's see. Do we know the time of death? Time of death is an important piece of information in a murder investigation. It can help to narrow down the list of suspects and determine who might have had an opportunity to commit the crime. In this case, the time of death has not been determined yet. The medical examiner will need to perform an autopsy to determine the exact time of death. Additionally, the police will examine other pieces of evidence such as the state of the body, the condition of the room, and any witnesses who might have seen or heard something around the time of the murder. All of this information can be used to determine a more precise time of death and help to solve the case. But I need the time of death. Uh, let's ask, when will the autopsy be done? The timeline for completing an autopsy depends on several factors, such as the workload of the medical examiner's office, the complexity of the case, and the availability of other resources, such as toxicology results. In general, an autopsy can take anywhere from a few days to several weeks to complete. In this case, it is not specified when the autopsy will be done, but it is an important step in the investigation and will likely be performed as soon as possible to help determine the cause and time of death and potentially provide other important information to solve the case. Do we have the toxicology results? Oh, okay. Well, back to the drawing board. State of the body. Okay. What is the state of the body? Oh, okay. This is not helping. <laughs> okay. Condition of the room. I think they kind of explained it already. It's a broken vase, gun, scattered papers and stuff. I was at the Smith residence all night. I arrived at 7 p.m. and didn't leave until the police arrived this morning. So she was there all night. Mr. Smith was killed late at night, so I'm assuming that's after 7 p.m. She didn't notice anything unusual. She says Mrs. Smith was in her room for most of the night. Didn't hear any arguments or disturbances. What did she say? Earlier today, yes, we had a big fight. He accused me of taking money from the business, but I swear I didn't do it. 
I mean, so far it sounds like it checks out. Let's just move on. Let's interview Mr. Johnson. Interviewing potential witnesses is a crucial part of a murder investigation. Mr. Johnson could be a valuable person to speak to as he might have seen or heard something that could help solve the case. Here's how the interview might go. Good afternoon, Mr. Johnson. I understand you live next door to the Smith residence. Next door? I thought he was a business partner. I guess he lives next door. So good afternoon, Mr. Johnson. I understand you live next door to the Smith residence. Yes, that's correct. Can you tell me what you saw or heard last night? I didn't see anything out of the ordinary, but I did hear some loud noises coming from the Smith residence around midnight. Can you describe the noises? It sounded like someone was arguing, but I couldn't make out what they were saying. Did you see anyone enter or leave the Smith residence around that time? No, I didn't see anyone, but my view of the front door is blocked by a large tree. Okay, thank you for your time. Blah, blah, blah. It's important to corroborate Mr. Johnson's story with other evidence and potentially speak to other witnesses to see if his accounts hold up. Can I ask him additional questions? What if I just direct it to him? Where were you last night? That's so cool. It just continues the interview. Mr. Johnson, where were you last night between the hours of 11 and 1 a.m.? Okay, so I guess that is our time slot. I was at home in my bed. Is there anyone who could confirm that you were at home? No, I live alone. It's not good. I see. Thank you for your time, Mr. Johnson. If you think of anything else that might be helpful to our investigation, please don't hesitate to reach out. It's important to note that the fact that Mr. Johnson was at home alone does not necessarily make him a suspect, but it is a common practice in a murder investigation to establish the whereabouts of potential witnesses and eliminate them as suspects if possible. The police will likely continue to gather more evidence and speak to other witnesses to build a complete picture of what happened and who might be responsible. Is it too late for me to ask the maid more questions? The view of the front door is blocked by a large tree. I mean, I don't, I don't know why he would lie about that. Okay, he says it sounded like someone was arguing. And this was around midnight. But the maid said, no, everything seemed normal. Most of the night, I didn't hear any arguments or disturbances. Okay, so someone is lying. Either the maid is lying or Mr. Johnson is lying. Maybe let's interview the maid again. Again, specifically about hearing any arguments. Re-interviewing witnesses can be a useful part of a murder investigation, especially if new information has come to light or if there are any inconsistencies from their previous statements. Yes. Here's a follow-up interview. Might go. Good afternoon. We spoke earlier about the events at the Smith residence last night. I have a few more questions for you. Of course. I'll do my best to help. You mentioned earlier that you heard a loud noise coming from the Smith's room. What she did? Can you tell me if you heard any arguments or raised voices coming from the room before the noise? Now that you mention it, yes. I did hear some raised voices coming from the room earlier in the evening. It sounded like Mr. and Mrs. Smith were having a disagreement. Can you describe what you heard or make out any specific words that were being said? I'm afraid not. I was working on the other side of the house and the voices were quite muffled. I couldn't make out any specific words or phrases. Thank you for your time remember anything else blah 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 okay huh let me go back to what she said earlier okay earlier she said everything's in normal i didn't hear any arguments or disturbances but she's changing her story okay why would she lie about that so rude i should have asked for the maid's name excuse me for not asking earlier but what is your name oh not not you the maid ask the maid what their 
name is. Maria. Okay, Maria. Maria. Do you know anything about your neighbor? Oops, I don't know how to spell. Mr. Johnson. Not much, I'm afraid. I've seen him around the neighborhood a few times, but we've never really spoken. From what I've heard, he keeps himself and doesn't have many visitors. Let me see what uh, Mr. Johnson said again. View of the front door is blocked by a large tree. Okay. Is there a large tree on his property? Yes, there is a large oak tree in his front yard. It's one of the tallest trees in the neighborhood. <laughs> I know I'm digging way too much in this, but would you say it would block his view of your front door? <laughs> okay, yes, I would say that the tree would block most of his view of our front door, but he would still be able to see a portion of it if he were looking out his front window. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I know that's not really <laughs> anything significant. You know, let's let's just talk to the third uh, suspect, Miss Davis, victim secretary. Okay. It's hard to keep track of all this. Good afternoon, Miss Davis. We're here as part of our investigation into the death of Mrs. Smith. Whoa, wait. Death of Mrs. Smith? I thought it was Mr. Smith who died. Yeah, oh, it's a typo. Oh well. Can you tell us where you were last night? Of course. I was at home, watching TV, and having an early night. Can anyone confirm your whereabouts? I live alone, so no one was with me. But I have a neighbor who can vouch for seeing me in my front yard earlier in the evening. Thank you for your time, Miss Davis. Yada yada yada. Well then, let's talk to her neighbor. Good afternoon. Can you please tell us your name and how you're connected to Miss Davis? My name is John, and I live next door to Miss Davis. Thank you, John. Can you tell us what you saw last night? Sure, I was out in my front yard around 7 p.m. and I saw Miss Davis come out of her house to water her plants. We chatted for a few minutes and then she went back inside. Did you see or hear anything else unusual last night? No, everything was quiet. I didn't hear or see anything out of the ordinary. Thank you for your time. Blah, blah, blah. Ah, oh, okay, what else can I ask? It's only at 7 p.m. Okay, I think I'm so stuck on alibi that I need to focus on motive. Okay, so rocky marriage, they were arguing, business partner, financial dispute, I need to ask him about that, and the crush on Mr. Smith was seen leaving the building shortly after the murder. Okay, yeah, that's true, I forgot about that. So... Before I ask of Mr. Johnson, I'll, I'll follow up on this. Miss Davis. Miss Davis, who obviously lied to me if she visited the office. Is it last night? I think so. Miss Davis, did you visit Mrs. Smith's? Why do they keep saying Mrs.? Mr. Smith's office last night. No, I did not. I was home all night, like I told you earlier. Are you sure? We have information that suggests you might have been at the office. I can assure you, Detective, that I was not at the office last night. I was at home, and I have a neighbor who can confirm that. Well, the neighbor can confirm seeing you at 7 p.m. So uh, is she not going to give me any info? Okay, let's ask John. It's kind of weird going back and forth. Well, he didn't see her. That doesn't mean she didn't. 
So far, the secretary has the neighbor as an alibi and the wife has the maid as an alibi, but Mr. Johnson has no one. Okay, let's let's interview Mr. Johnson again. Focusing on his business relationship with Mr. Smith. Good afternoon, Mr. Johnson. We'd like to ask you a few more questions, this time about your business relationship with Mr. Smith. <laughs> of course, detective, I'll do my best to answer your questions. Can you tell us about your business dealings with Mr. Smith? <laughs> How do I tell AI that they're putting it wrong? It's Mr. Smith, not Mrs. Smith. Let's see what happens. Ah, there you go. They fixed it. Good afternoon, Mr. Johnson. We'd like to ask you a few more questions, this time about your business relationship with Mr. Smith. Of course, detective, I'll do my best to answer your questions. Can you tell us about your business dealings with Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith and I were business partners. We owned a company together and we worked closely on a daily basis. Can you tell us about the nature of your business relationship? Was it a good relationship or were there any conflicts between you two? Our business relationship was good for the most part. We had our disagreements like any business partners, but we always worked through them and found a solution that was best for the company. Let's go back to his first interview. Actually, it wasn't the first interview. It was the intro. Financial dispute. I heard there was a financial dispute between you and Mr. Smith. Nah. Mr. Johnson, we received information that there was a financial dispute between you and Mr. Smith. Can you tell us about that? Yes, there was a disagreement about the finances of our company. Mr. Smith and I had different ideas about how the money should be spent and we couldn't reach a resolution. Can you tell us more about the disagreement? Mr. Smith wanted to invest in some new projects and I didn't think they were a good idea. I thought it was too risky and I didn't want to jeopardize the stability of the company. We had several discussions about it, but we couldn't reach a compromise. Did this disagreement escalate into something more serious? No, detective. It was just a disagreement, nothing more. We were still on good terms, and I had no reason to harm Mr. Smith in any way. Thank you for your time, Mr. Johnson. Okay, is there anything I can draw out of this? Let's ask him. Was anyone else aware of these? disagreements. Mr. Johnson, was anyone else aware of these disagreements between you and Mr. Smith? Yes, some of our employees were aware of the situation. Whenever there was a disagreement, we tried to handle it professionally and keep it as private as possible, but it was difficult to keep it completely hidden from the rest of the team. Do you have any reason to believe that any of your employees might have had a motive to harm Mr. Smith as a result of these disagreements? No, detective. Our employees were loyal to both of us and to the company. I can't imagine any of them having a motive to harm Mr. Smith. Okay, can we interview one of the employees? I don't know. Can I have a list of the employees. <laughs> it's like my intern or assistant or something. <laughs> oh my goodness. I <laughs> had to interview five people. Uh, let's just go down the list. Okay. If she knows anything about disagreements. Okay, I'm not going to read this because it's, it's kind of like the same information that Mr. Johnson was telling us, but let's just keep going down the list. Let's ask David Lee the same question. I think that's verbatim. Same exact response. There's nothing different there. 
I'm hoping someone gives a, a separate answer. All right, that's more of the same. James Brown. Am I just not asking the right question? Okay, Elizabeth. I should have just said, let's ask all of them the same question. All right. Do I need another question? Is there a janitor there? <laughs> no. Okay, let's just see. Were there any witnesses at the office? Like a janitor or something? Ah, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Let's let's talk to Carlos. Oops. Okay, so nothing out of the ordinary. He arrived at eight, left at 10. Didn't see anyone enter or leave the building. Great. Was there anyone else with you? Okay, all by himself. That was a dead end. Maybe who would I ask if there's like security access or security guards but he says there's no one else there can we check if the building has cctv or security guards not carlos i'm not asking carlos oh all right all right the building has security camera main entrance and common areas also security guard on duty at the front desk and he can give us the footage okay let's let's talk to the security guard <laughs> excuse me security guard <laughs> i remember seeing mr smith arrive around seven he greeted me straight to the elevator didn't see anyone else it was a slow night not many people were coming in or out of the building uh, that doesn't help me. Can you check security footage? To make sure no one else entered the building. Okay, you can check it now. Let me pull it up. Here it is. I can fast forward to the time of Smith's arrival and see if anyone else entered the building. Let's see. No detective. It looks like Mr. Smith was the only one who entered the building that night. The footage shows him walking in, taking the elevator, and not leaving until the next morning. Wait, not leaving. Yeah, he, I mean, like he didn't leave because he was dead. <laughs> um, hmm. Does he know? Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? Mr. Smith. Why do I always do that? Oh, was the detective I'm talking to myself? <laughs> Ask the security guard what their name is. Uh so there's two Carlos? Wait, is Carlos the security guard? In your last name? <laughs> Wait a second. I thought Carlos Martinez is the janitor. <laughs> Do you know the name of the janitor? <laughs> uh, Juan Rodriguez. <laughs> Wait a 
a second. Okay, let's talk to Juan. <laughs> I know this is important, but I think this is just pretty funny. About giving us the wrong name. <laughs> I apologize, I must have misspoken. I am Juan Rodriguez, the janitor of the building. I am sorry for any confusion I may have caused. Why did you come up with the name? Carlos, do you know the security guard? Of the building. Whoa. Yes, I know the security guard. His name is Max Anderson. Okay, I, I just I just think this is just the AI generator. <laughs> but I just wanted to see. Let's see. Let's talk to Max Anderson. This probably is gonna be the same question. No, not you. Hey, I'm trying to. Uh, what? Oh, okay, anyways, let's move on. We already got Carlos to check it for us. I'm so lost, <laughs> I went down this rabbit hole. Where was I? Okay, as far as opportunity, it seems like Mr. Johnson's the only one who doesn't have a solid alibi. But as far as motive goes, it doesn't sound like, you know, their disagreements or arguments were really strong enough for him to kill Mr. Smith. All five employees said, you know, they were fine. So does that mean someone's alibi is not holding up? All right, we got to get into the motives now. We got to ask the secretary about her feelings. Okay, let's talk to uh, let's go back to the wife actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk to Mrs. Smith about the argument. I should remind you that interviewing the spouse of a deceased person can be difficult and sensitive. It's important to approach conversation with empathy and respect for their loss. Okay, let's just say this. Tell her I feel sorry for her loss. It says you this time instead of detective. That's so weird. It's not letting me talk to her again. Can I interview Mrs. Smith? Hmm, am I missing something here? Okay, I'm, I'm guessing it's not letting me interview her again for some reason. Let's just assume her alibi is good. So the maid said all night. The neighbor for the secretary, though, only saw her at 7 p.m. 
but also said he never saw her enter or leave after that. Oh, okay, okay, let's see. Do we know? Let's just go back to the body. <laughs> Do we know the cause of death? Okay. Do we know what type of gun was found at the crime scene? Okay. Can we speak to any other police officer on the case? Yes. Oh. Yes. Please arrange an interview with one of the police officers on the case. No, 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 no. We're losing it. We're losing it. <laughs> let's, uh, let's repeat this one. Let's repeat this one. No. What's going on? We were doing so well. Oh, I, gotta, I gotta start voting these. This isn't helpful. Allow me to interview. To give an interview. <laughs> oh, okay, what's going on? What's going on with the case? Regarding Mr. Smith. Uh, is it because I didn't put a question mark? Oh, no. What's going on? We were doing so well. Did it just lose context of the case? Tell me more about... Let's just see if it goes back to it. No. Okay, then how come I can't do any other actions? Okay, can you give me a hint? How about that? Okay, this is just a shot. I'm sorry, guys. It's not letting me connect back to the case. I can't do anything. Am I still able to solve the case? What happened? What happened? You're doing so well. Oh man. So anticlimactic if this is it. Are you still, how can I ask? Are you still giving me a murder mystery? of Mr. Smith. Oh, okay. Looks like I've reached my limit for this free version. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm so sorry about that. But now we kind of know how AI generated murder mysteries go. I thought it was going really well. I thought the follow ups and the leads and everything it's really cool. You can see someone's response and see who else it connects to. You can try to ask them questions. I thought it was going really, really well until I don't know what was going on. It just was not responding to anything. Anyways, my theory still goes that the secretary is still very sus and her alibi is not as solid as the wife and the motive I don't know what the motives would be for the business partner if everyone was saying their relationship was fine. But I wanted to dig more into the motive of the secretary. Even though she had a crush on him, did he want to end the relationship if they were having a secret affair? Who knows? Who knows what could have happened? <laughs> again, so sorry if this feels so anticlimactic. Maybe I'll try this again sometime. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll see you next time.